So somebody, I guess it was on Twitter, an an economist that I followed tweeted out a while ago uh, saying, this is a really great article on the economics of warfare. And it's your article, Masters of the Air, the Economics of Bombing in World War II. It came out on March 15th. So before we dive into the particulars, can you just explain, like, is, is this an area of your research or is this just something that caught your fancy and you wrote it up? It's mm-hmm. just fun. Um, though I think it sheds a lot of light on some important economic and economic history questions, which I'm sure we'll get into. So yeah, me and my wife, uh, as we were watching Masters of the Air on Apple TV, we really appreciate you said it's kind of historical authenticity. You know, it doesn't, doesn't do a lot of uh, things modern TV shows, I feel, sometimes do try to be too relevant. It seemed authentic to me. So we, I dived into the book, basically. So it's, it's based on a book. And I had already read a lot about World War II. I'm not like a, a super nerd when it comes to World mm. Wars, like some people are, but I've got a healthy interest in it. And do you so reenact battles in your basement? Exactly. Well, I paint soldiers, so uh, but not quite, not quite reenact. I'm not into the details of, of every specific tank mm. or airplane. I'm not, I'm not that bad. But yeah. So, so the TV show was great, and it raised a lot of economic questions, and I c- connect them to some reading I'd done and some stuff I teach actually. On the economics of World War II. Okay, great. Yeah, so I, as I said to you, I think we'll just walk through the article here because obviously many of the listeners would not have read it yet just to whet their appetite and have them dive in more. So one thing that jumped out of the beginning, I just want to make sure I understood the claim. You were saying that the losses in the American 8th Air Force were third only to the Japanese kamikazes and German U-boat commanders. Is that, or people serving on a German U-boat? Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. so I would have... And I guess that they mean in terms of percentages. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. It's just a proportion. It was most deadly. I, I can't. I don't have a figure right in front of me. So I have it in my head. It's all, it's more than twenty five, thirty percent of people who served who died. But I'd have to double check that. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievably deadly, particularly in the first year of. So the, for a background, right? So World War Two obviously begins in nineteen fifty nine. The U.S. enters after Pearl Harbor, end of nineteen forty one. But it takes a long time for the Americans to build up a strategic bombing force mm-hmm. capable of kind of actually making bombing raids onto continental Germany. So it's actually only 1943, kind of summer 1943, the Americans are really getting going with this strategic bombing campaign. The British have been doing it already. But the British do night bombing, which means they're basically just hitting random targets. A lot of civilians, mm-hmm. they're not really strategic at all. The Americans really believe that they can hit military targets. So they can take out key industrial points. And they said the Americans don't, at this point at least, they are concerned about killing civilians. So they don't want to just carpet bomb the civilian population. They think it's only justified if they can hit strategic targets. So they're going in daylight, basically. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing, and the TV show is very good at capturing this, is that at this point, this is a big error, really. The Americans had not invested yet in escort fighters, the long-range escort fighters. Mm-hmm. So they're only escorted by the fighters up until really kind of like the channel or a little bit into the channel. And at a certain point, the fighters have to go home and the bombers are on their own. These bombers, the B-17s or B-29s, are huge. They're, they have a lot of gunners. They're flying fortresses, they're called. So you think they're capable, but obviously they're, they're moving targets for the German fighter planes and the air flak, the flak, the anti-aircraft fire. Yeah, so the casualties are very high, especially initially. And that's something the TV show kind of gets because you see characters who you like mm-hmm. and people who are introduced and then they just get killed off or at least shot down. Okay, yeah. So I guess the trade-off would be like other things equal. I'd rather be in a plane than out in the front lines. But you're, you're saying statistically, you are more likely to go home if you were in some other branch rather than being on these bombers, especially in the beginning when they didn't have the fighter escorts, the full way. Yeah. Yeah. I so, say so it's a win. So this is like the TV show, the book captures. And so, yeah, it's a much better lifestyle apart from the risk of dying because you basically sleep in a bed at night. Mm-hmm. You get to like go drinking and passing with civilians. You're not in a cold trench. You're eating decent food. You get had a big breakfast before you get on one of these planes, but it's very, very dangerous. So you're, okay. you're, 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 chances of surviving are much lower than if you're assigned to being an infantry grunt. Okay. So also the reason that surprised, it didn't surprise me that there were high losses among the Allied Air Force, but when you said the Americans, so 
as you just talked me through it, I, I guess I did kind of know that, oh yeah, the Americans were the one that more focused on long-term strategic, long-range, excuse me, strategic bombing. But I just thought like, oh, the Battle of Britain was so awful in terms of, you know, the British just throwing up pilots, just getting mowed down. But you're saying, you know, no, over the course of the war, that was just, you know, a blip compared to how many losses the American pilots suffered. I think it's a proportion, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I think the British losses were so heavy in the Air Force, so I think in general, but the, the overall... British Air Force losses are less, I think, because they're bombing at night is mm-hmm. the main thing. Yeah. And they say similarly, the American Air Force losses against Japan are lower because basically by the time the Americans get into range, the Japanese Air Force has been shot to pieces. Right. So they're kind of, they've got a free run more or less. And so basically being one of these guys bombing Germany is particularly dangerous. Okay. So just, you know, you kind of alluded to it, but just the big picture of like, what's the function? Like, why do we call it strategic bombing? What's going on there? And there's sort of this iconic example that a lot of us, I think, especially, so just so you know, Mark, my specialty in economics is capital and interest theory. Yeah. And so when I heard years ago, the story of, oh yeah, the allies were trying to take out ball bearing production facilities. Like to me, that was amazing. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, just because of the capital, you know, heterogeneity and, you, know, yeah. you, might, you might think, oh, let's take out the German soldier or the snipers. Well, let's go find the captains. Like, no, if we could take away the Germans' ball bearings, they would cripple. So can you just give that the details of that iconic one, but also how you know many thought maybe actually that wasn't the, a huge success? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So it's a famous raid in 1943 in Ringsburg and Schweinfurt where there's a ball bearing factory. But I think this is a this is a great segue into the economics of it as well. Actually, mm-hmm. this is our iconic raid, which is depicted in in the TV show as well, in which American losses are very very high. But at the time, the plan is it's deep in Germany, so Rheinsberg is southwest Germany, so you're going really deep into Germany. So that's why the losses incurred are so high. You're not just raiding like Hamburg or somewhere close to the coast. And the American planners thought it was worth doing this because of ball bearings are just you know they're critical for making any kind of motorized vehicle. So they're seen as this critical input into production. So the idea was if we could take out the ball bearings, we could kind of take out the production of tanks and aircraft and all these other things. Mm-hmm. And that's going to have this like massive knock-on effect on the whole German war economy. But this is, does connect to kind of capital stuff and capital theory even, I think, because this is my reading of it at least. We allied planners, they kind of have this view of the economy as a machine. Mm-hmm. And so you take out one critical joint, one critical thing, and the whole thing kind of collapses. So that's why they have very really ambitious about what it's going to achieve. They think it's really going to make a massive dent in the German war economy. And I think what economists understand better than kind of war planners is actually that people are very, have a lot of ingenuity, and mm-hmm. they're always substitutes. They're always workarounds and substitutes. And you can reconfigure your factory to build something like a ball bearing, mm-hmm. I think. Potentially. So it turns out so this, this raid is successful in terms of hitting the target. American losses are, are huge, so we didn't try it again, but it doesn't dent the German war economy that much. Like, you know, they, they reco- within three months, they've kind of recovered production. So the general kind of historical consensus, most historians say it's like it wasn't worth it, it was a mistake. Do this kind of strategic damage the way, the way they thought we could. And what I say in my piece of is that's true, like this idea of just take out one factory and that's going to like destroy production, it, it was naive. But actually, there were loads of benefits to the overall policy of strategic bombing, which actually historians tend to miss. And only you need some kind of actual economic insights to draw out. 